first off, we're going to make the dough. Now, this dough takes a bit of time, but it's really exciting. I'm heating all of the milk with the sugar. This yeast, easy to get hold of. And when you make fresh doughnuts, you need fresh yeast. Adding some of the warm milk to the yeast will activate it, which will help the dough to rise. Just half. Give that a quick whisk. The sugar's dissolved in the milk. The fresh yeast disintegrates instantly. Set the yeast mixture to one side while it does its job. To start the main dough mix, I'm adding half the butter to the remaining milk. That gives the dough a nice silkiness. I want it light. So melt the butter into the milk. Flour into a sieve. That helps to make the dough nice and smooth. And you know what? When you've got a smooth dough, it sort of rises evenly. Add a pinch of salt and two egg yolks. Pour in the warm milk and melted butter. Don't start over-mixing it. When you over-mix the dough of a donut, it gets really tight. And you're not going to let it aerate. Yeast in. Ooh, nice and warm. I love that smell. Now, I'm looking for a sort of elastic -y texture. Just dropping off the spoon. Nice. Flour the board. Take the dough out. Lovely. Lightly sprinkle, touch more flour, and just pull it over and push in. And every time you're sort of turning it, almost like you're turning the dough into itself. The dough should just sort of relax. And it shouldn't be sticking to your fingers now. It's just nice and pliable. Set that in a nice clean bowl. A little sprinkling of flour in there. So as it starts to rise, it doesn't stick. Cover that with thin film. Leave the dough to rise in a warm place for 60 to 90 minutes until it's doubled in size. This stage is called proving. Now, whilst that's proving, get a pan on. For the chocolate filling or ganache, pour 500 mils of double cream into a saucepan and add honey. Bring the mixture to a gentle boil. Traditionally, we've always put jam in there, but chocolate and donuts, wow, to die for. Add the cream. That give that a good mix. The butter elevates the ganache into a really nice, shiny chocolate coat. Look at that. Whoa. Give it a really nice whisk. So the whisking gives it that aerated texture to the ganache. You're just lightening the load a little bit. Whoa. Nice. Chocolate filling done. Put it in the fridge to cool, then it's time to gently roll out the dough. Just let it roll naturally, about a centimetre and a half in depth. Slice. One. Two. Place them on to your tray and let them rise again. Once the donuts have had 30 to 40 minutes to rise, it's time to shallow fry them in a pan filled one third full with hot vegetable oil. Risen, but look, they're sort of like little pockets of air. Right, here we go. Place these in nice and carefully. Four maximum. If there's too many in the pan, the oil will go cold and the donuts will come out soggy. Turn them over. Beautiful. They're going to come out into some sugar mixed with some malt powder. 50 50. How do you tell they're actually cooked in the center? Tap on top, it should be hollow. In and just sprinkle the malt and the sugar. Shake off the excess. I get so excited every time I make donuts. Now, look at those beauties. These are delicious, eaten as they are. But the ganache is going to be the icing on the cake. Pipe them back. Peel the bag over your hands. Don't forget to pop the nozzle in. I want the texture. Almost like a little liquid inside. So I'm going to pipe them when they're a little bit warm. Hopefully, you've got that burst of magic. Operation Donut. Lift up the donut. 
Squeeze, push in and fill. Just to start seeing that chocolate coming out. And sit that back down. Mmm. Nice. Sit them on there. They've got a little bit heavier, and we all know why. Nice. That one's got my name on it. Oh, that is amazing. Oh. Add the curry paste and cook to release the flavors. Add cubed potatoes to serve dollop the black bean mixture on crunchy tortillas.